Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Black Moon. One of the most epic things with this car is the flame exhaust. To get this back up to movie spec, we need to get these flames going. So we've got the team working on it again. We're gonna figure out how to make these flames go big and even try and match the movie. Let's get to it. All right, so the original car came with a spot, a canister for propane for the exhaust tips for the flames. Also had some uh, cabling and wiring that kind of was maybe not safe or out of date. So we've taken all that out. This is the uh, suspension we threw in last time. So if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link for it. But basically uh, it had the gas running to the inlets here and there was kind of like a spark or something you find like from a barbecue. For this episode, we got to brainstorm how we're going to do this, make all the right connections, make that movie magic work. So we have a exciting topic today. Yeah. We do we do some cool stuff around here. Is flamethrowers. So this one's gonna be a little bit more like Mythbusters. We gotta come up with a plan. Tony and Russ are gonna be doing the planning and a lot of the execution. In the movie, flames shooting out the back of this thing. How are we gonna make a flamethrower? So when we got the car, there was a small propane tank in the back. Okay. And then there was, you know, like your barbecue lighters, you know, the trigger lighters. There were a couple of those in their rig that you could pull a cable and it would ignite. That's not very clean because then after so many uses, you got to replace the lighters and kind of reinstall it, which is mm -hmm. kind of a pain. So we could either do like a barbecue sparker, you know, the ones that are built into your grill, mm -hmm. figure out some way to trigger those. Or we could do like a spark plug. Okay. And we just have to get a spark generator is the idea. I like the propane idea. It's easy to get, you can get it anywhere. So we need some way to burn the propane. Rush burner. Oh, rush burner. I think the, I think the holy grail would be is if you're in the car, you just push a button and as long as you're holding the button down, it flames. Okay. Right? So we already have PDU in the car. If you have your button on the dash, you get solenoids that are all stainless steel. It'll take the, the propane in and then from there, we'd have this line go to the burner. Okay. So the second thing would be some sort of ignition box, and then it will spark something to light the gas. So in a nutshell, the plan is to use propane, use a brush burner, and find a way to ignite it. Okay, so this is plan A. Plan A, what could possibly go wrong? Plan A, right there. Check this out. We have our Gagater propane torch. Now, this is a heavy duty weed burner, but we are going to be using it as our flamethrowers for the Black Moon. It's also for creative arts and beyond. So we're going for arts and beyond for sure. This looks like the torch head. Okay, so, so this is our hose right here. Thing. Oh, it's left hand thread. Gagater tip. That's what we got. Boom, flamethrower. So we're gonna test this out. Two feet, eight inches, okay. And we need to ditch it somewhere in the car. The, the flame hole is We might even have to remove this little notch. They have this little tab here, which they were, I assume they had a nozzle coming through and uh, then that's what would give you the flame. What we're gonna do is we're basically gonna notch this so this can sit in there. We gotta mark this and cut this so we can weld this guy on. We got this guy, I removed some paint on the bottom and then we have this guy that's all cut. So this is what it looked like when we started. This is where we're at now. Kinda looks like a jet afterburner. We're gonna get this on the welding bench and I'm going to TIG it in place. We've got our little cup for the flamethrower welded onto that tab. Right now I just have a couple burly tacks in there. The idea is we will have our gas line come in right here and this will just thread on in. Okay, so as you guys can see, this just threads in um, we will have an electric solenoid instead of a manual gas valve here. Um, and then this will go to your propane tank and then you'll have your flamethrowers. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece on the vehicle uh, along with the the other the other side and then uh, we'll be able to test our flamethrowers. So this is the rear bumper of the Black Moon. You can kind of see the old witness marks from where this was mounted. So this is where the flamethrower housing is going to go. So we have a couple bolts that we're holding this on. That is your flamethrower housing. Other one on the other side, and then we're gonna do some tests. Today we have a robot lawnmower. This is from Emotion. This is the Luba Mini, and it is all-wheel drive. This is an all-wheel drive smart mower built for any yard. Uh-huh, here it's got your setup guide. Accessory kit, charger, plug. It climbs slopes up to 75, 80% and handles rough, uneven, or even wet ground with ease. With a 7.9 inch cutting width and adjustable cutting height from 0.8 to 2.6 inches. This is home base. This is where it gets plugged in and this is where it can do its charging. So it goes like that and gets charged. So this is part of the satellite setup. It keeps your grass neat and tailored to your style. Forget messy boundary wires. Luba uses UltraSense AI vision and RTK GPS navigation to map your yard and stay inside your zones with inch level accuracy. So the UltraSense AI vision has obstacle avoidance. So if there's something in the lawn, it'll actually detect it and mow around it, not through it. We also have this, which I call the garage. So basically this will come and park underneath this, to keep it out of any kind of weather elements. Everything is controlled in the MamOcean app. Set up multiple mowing zones, choose no-go areas, or even pick patterns like stripes, checkerboards, or diamonds. All right, we just set this guy up. We mapped out the area here that we're gonna mow, and we've just got this started. It's designed for lawns up to 0 0.25, 0 0.4 acres, depending on the model. Perfect for small and medium yards. So yep, it's got a camera on the front. Let us know what it's doing. The battery runs up to 90 minutes, and when it's low, it recharges itself and continues where it left off. For peace of mind, it has GPS tracking and anti-theft alerts. One mower, no wires, no effort, just a perfect lawn every day. If you haven't upgraded your yard tools yet, now is the time to get the Luba Mini AWD and let your robot take over mowing. So I think this is a really cool product and it will automate your life, saving you hours every week of mowing. If you're interested in a product like this, I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, we are doing a test run of the uh, extra propulsion system, the flamethrowers. We got Russ on uh, fire extinguisher duty. We got Tony that's also uh, gonna be lighting the flame. Mythbuster style, we got this to work. Um, I think the customer's gonna be really happy, but we did wanna see if we can match the movie. So one of the things with the brush burner just being Kind of at full blast it gives a nice blue flame i'm sure it's hot but uh, it doesn't look like the movie we wanted something a little more fireballish so we're going to do a couple modifications see if we can make it look a little more like the movie we're going to do some throttle control some like i'll call it carburetor type things where we're going to limit airflow or maximize airflow however you want to see it so we can actually get more yellow flame less blue flame so uh tony why don't you talk us through what we're doing okay so right now this is our prototype so it actually uses the Venturi effect to pull in air at the same time it's pushing the propane. So what we've done just for now is we've taped off where it is pulling in air. So less air. Less air. So that means we'll get m like more gas flow and then it'll mix with more air. So again, we're hoping for more yellow flame. Yes, that's the idea. All right, here we go. This is with uh, partially blocked off oxygen. We're hoping for more yellow flame. Because you see flashes of John, John's face is getting brighter and darker. Describe what we did here. Yeah, what did we do, John? So just cut down a piece of aluminum tubing, some 3 8 aluminum tubing, and basically flared the end, put it over the jet, um, and then put it down in the, the throat of the carburetor, we'll say. 
Um, basically just... Thought is to make it a richer mixture. Yeah, less air. So the goal is we're trying to get uh, more yellow flame or less blue flame. Yeah, it's way brighter. That was awesome. All right, so we just modified the uh, second one. It's a little different, so we're seeing if it's better or worse the same. What did you do? What was the difference? Uh, it was just a little bit longer of a piece. Um, went down the throat of the carburetor a little bit further. I'm not really sure why that made that much of a difference, but it worked, so I'm yeah. happy. So we'll do it for both of them. Oh, that is like sizzling. <laughs> that was awesome. So we're gonna see if we can get a spark plug tester to give us a constant spark and we gotta see if uh, a propane torch can light off that constant spark. It's kind of not a bad day to be at work today. You know, flamethrower things, I guess. Oh, the goes away. Uh, the spark doesn't jump when I put gas to it. Okay, so this didn't work. We tried getting spark out of it and it just won't light off a uh, propane torch. So back in the box. With the failed spark plug tester, we are going to try using an ignition coil. So I have an Audi Volkswagen ignition coil here. We're gonna power this up, uh, see if it will spark and give us a constant spark out of a spark plug. And then we will control this with a PDU. So I gotta get it tested today. I gotta hook it up to the PDU and then we'll put a flame to it and see if it'll light off uh, a flame. Okay, so here we have our hard wire. So we're gonna use one of the outputs here. We'll give this power. We'll get some config things going. And then I've wired this up, this plug, to plug into this coil. So that's what we'll get powered up. Okay, here we got um, our ignition wire coming from, this is white wire. It's coming from this triggering, uh, that's what triggers the coil when you have power on the other wires. And there's our spark plug. Let me show you on the PDU how we configure this. So again, this is Hardwire's um, user interface. It's pretty good. We like it, it seems to work pretty good for us. Inputs, we won't assign it to input 23. We will call this flame ignition. And we're gonna edit it. Now we need to give this a little bit of amperage to get going. So we'll set the high fuse, but we'll give it 10 amps as it's overhead. Pulse this with PWM. We will drag this out to 500 milliseconds or five seconds. So we're right here at flame ignition. So if I turn that on, we should get a bit of a spark. And then let me try and turn it on and see what happens. I don't like this wigging the computer out. Yep, that works. Okay, so we're gonna put the spark plug in there. Ow. It got me. All right, so we are testing to see if the ignition coil will light the gas. There you go. Yeah, not bad. So it's just gotta be in the yeah. mixture yeah, not chamber, not outside, got it. We tested this, this does seem to light the flame. Some of it is we're trying to put this in a different spot because we need to put it back inside the car. We don't want to be able to see this. So instead of having a spark plug and this O2 sensor bung welded into the can, we're going to use the Gagater's ignition spark end. I don't know what it's called. It's a thingy. So I've got a, I'm going to adapt this uh, extension lead for the spark plug onto the coil so it discharges onto this. This to plug into there in a very That's 
All right, so this is our solenoid valve. That's kind of the gas line. Got another just manual valve here. These are the ones that are uh, now mounted to generate the spark. Although we got some nice spark, the gas seems to be exiting enough that it's not uh, making contact with the spark. So we can do a few adjustments, see if we can get this to work. So we have modified some of the tube positioning, so hopefully this will spark now. Sure, what do you okay, think? Right. Flames were pretty cool, but uh, in the movie, they looked a little red. They maybe did that in post with editing, but I thought it'd be cool to see if we could do it in real life, make some red flames. All right, a little help from the internet. Basically, strontium chloride, this is a salt, and when you add it to a flame, it makes things turn red. I've heard they use this in like road flares and things. But the plan is, I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna call it a wick. This is my dog's old chew toy. But uh, we're actually gonna make a little solution with IPA, so we're gonna dissolve the strontium chloride in IPA, and we're gonna soak uh, maybe just a little strand of this in that, and then have it evaporate off. So then it'll just leave the salt on a wick. So we'll have a salt wick and then we'll just put this in the flame see if we can get a nice bright red color. But first we'll let this dry out and then uh, we'll see what does the flame. So we're going to be trying to see if this produces a brighter flame. So just go ahead and do that one. We're just going straight up. I don't know if you can so, see yeah, that. Yeah, you can see that. Oh yeah. So yeah, plan with uh, Black Moon Exhaust right. if we can do uh, a little, little red to it. <laughs> do it again. That is so awesome. Oh, that worked. That is so cool. All right, again, we're going just with kind of our system electrically. So we'll see if it works. Go for it. Can you tell we're having fun? One thing we're learning though is with the flamethrower, if we want the red flame, it kind of has to be burning, I'll say, inside where we're putting the salt. Um, some of the tubes and the extensions we did to make kind of more of the fireball effect, um, the combustion's actually happening, I'll call it like in the air, so basically after the salt. So we can't get necessarily the red fireball, we can either get the red kind of jet flame. we can kind of get the yellow fireball. So tell me in the comments which one you like better. This was a really fun episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I mentioned earlier that uh, we had a couple episodes backload, so we're kind of pretty much caught up. The movie car owner, like all of our other owners, do have a budget, so we do have to pace ourselves. We will be putting in some other content as well, so make sure to subscribe so you can see all of our builds. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.